Hey everyone, before I start my latest video, Cove Audio has an awesome special for all viewers' of channel. For a limited time only, you can get a pair of their noise-canceling Bluetooth headphones for 65% off. That's an original price of $159.99 and now just $55.99. That's a great deal, so make sure you check out the link below. Coming out of Iowa, there are two tight ends that could be both selected in the first round of this year's draft. TJ Hawkinson and Noah Fant are two very good players at this position. While Fant is a great player and a guy that we'll discuss in our next video, I wanted to talk with you about what makes Hawkinson the number one tight end in his class. Before we begin, Iowa has been known as the factory for NFL-ready offensive linemen. They are a heavy zone team and they have produced the likes of Marshall Yonda, Brandon Scherf, and Brian Blaga, among many others. They also had last year's yardage leading tight end George Kittle, who was a fifth round pick just two years ago. While Kittle is known for his pass catching prowess, he is also known for his ferocity and willingness as a run blocker. How he fell to the fifth round is beyond me. Regardless, Hawkinson is in that same mold. He's a powerful high effort run blocker first and foremost with a high upside as a pass catcher. This is what makes him so damn valuable in this upcoming draft. He fits every scheme based on his willingness and sheer love of run blocking. After going through his film, he has excellent footwork to make reach blocks and to get his hips in position to seal a defender outside of running lane. He's very astute with where he needs to be. He's also great at cut blocking backside defenders and his sustain to take blocks to the whistle is extremely fun to watch. He can also move an edge rusher out of his path and he can bulldoze people on occasion. In my opinion, if you drafted him to a wide zone scheme, he'd be deadly, but he could be excellent as a pin blocker or as a combo dry blocker on gap plays as well. Even though I've never given a tight end a higher run blocking grade, Hawkinson is a guy that can still improve in this area. He plays way too urgent at times and will completely run past a defender. He needs to be more conservative, especially on second level and third level targets. Once he masters this discipline and improves his downfield angles, he'll be one of the best run blockers in the NFL in a very short time. While run blocking might not sound sexy as an attribute of a top tier player, it's the type of thing that will get him on the field on early downs. Coaches will trust him and they'll reward him with designer plays based on his skill set. Plus, when you add in his clear upside as a receiver, he'll factor in all aspects of an NFL game plan. I do think, however, that he still has a lot of room to grow in this area. He's currently somewhere in the good to very good range, but he's not the elite mismatch receiving tight end that everybody wants on their team. He needs to get better at creating hesitation on his routes and becoming more subtle in his movements and head fakes. Even though I think he's a bit of a one-speed runner at times, he has excellent awareness to find soft spots in zone defenses. He's a very easy target to throw to. In my opinion, he can start with the shallow and intermediate portions of the route tree as a rookie before becoming proficient at the downfield routes later in his career. While I mentioned that he's not elite in terms of his straight line speed, he has a very good vertical and has shown an awesome ability to win on contested catches. I was very impressed with how he tracked balls over his shoulder. He only has two career drops at Iowa, and he constantly showed the ability to bring in balls that are thrown outside his frame. When I looked around the league for his pro comparison, the guy I think of when I turn on his tape is Hunter Henry. Henry is drafted in the second round by the Chargers back in 2016, and he's already a top 10 tight end based on his skill set. Yes, he was injured this past year, but it's his overall ability to block his ass off and his upside as a receiver that makes these players similar. The way I'd use Hawkinson as a rookie is by having him attack seams, run spot and slants between zones, and then would create designer plays lining him up as a wide tight end early downs. He would be very good in this role early in his career. By his second and third season, I can easily see him taking the next step in terms of his development as a route runner. He clearly showed upside, and his ability to create big plays with soft hands will make every single NFL coach fall in love with him. Well, that's it for this one. As I mentioned at the start of this video, my generous sponsor this week is Covadio. If you're in the market for a new set of Bluetooth noise canceling headphones, they have a great special for all viewers of this channel. For a limited time only, they are offering a 65% discount on your order. That's right, at an original price of $159.99, they are now just $55.99. Over the past couple of weeks, I've had the great pleasure of using these headphones. I like them a lot. What's nice is that they are wireless so you can use them on the go or at the gym, and they are great for fitness type activities. Plus, since they are noise canceling with a built-in microphone, you can use these at work for hands-free phone calls as well. I've noticed that on a single charge, I can usually get around six to seven hours, which is great for what I need them for. I highly recommend them, and if you want high quality sound at a very reasonable and discounted price, go ahead and use the promo code SG65 or by following the link below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. 
As discussed before, I'll continue updating my big board on my Patreon account and will be releasing some mock drafts once April rolls around. Also, if you want to reach out to me directly, you can find me on Twitter at Samuel R. Gold.